there are two domains of existence. There is reality, actuality, objective truth, and then there is our personal experience of that reality. Now, obviously, all of us operate in this personal experience of reality. So we're all walking around interpreting and drawing conclusions, developing a narrative around that objective reality. You can use the example of wearing a pair of sunglasses. If I'm wearing a pair of sunglasses, it's certainly inside a room, it would alter how I would see the room in terms of the light. I would see it would occur as darker than it really is. Now, if I'm unconscious, I am not aware that I'm wearing the sunglasses. If I'm conscious, I'm at least recognizing, yes, I have these sunglasses on, but I know I have them on. So I know that I'm not interpreting reality exactly the way it is, but at least I'm aware of it. And like anything else, once when we're aware of something, then we become more conscious and then we could start to see where I've become distorted. Now, in a lot of ways, if you look at these sunglasses, they really represent all the things that have happened to us in our lives, where we've been hurt, where we've been disappointed, maybe our trust was broken, and how that has affected and shaped the way we see things in life. And I'm sure we could all agree that we all have that, that all resonates with us. Now, along with the experiences that we've had, we also have our beliefs that we have many, many examples where people have believed in something throughout history only to discover that they're not true. Obviously, the great one is that the Earth is flat. In fact, it's kind of funny. There's actually about 50,000 people on the uh, Netflix that still believe that uh, the Earth is flat and that it's a big hoax. But we would all collectively understand that the Earth is round and not flat. Another thing that I was watching about the pyramids where we were told 1,500 years ago that the pyramids were built by slaves, 2,500 B.C., and they were the tombs for the pharaohs. And I don't know about you, but when I grew up, I mean, I remember looking in the textbook and seeing the pictures of these slaves pulling with the ropes and carrying the stones up the pyramid and uh, you just accepted that as the facts and that's true in fact uh, you know one thing that we realize is once we decide something is true we have a tendency to not really go back and revisit it to see if maybe our conclusion was faulty now when one thing about these pyramids that i found fascinating was somehow they had an intelligence that seems to have been lost. They had a higher consciousness. They, it almost There's evidence that they had an ability to create an energy, a natural energy, more powerful than the electricity that we use to this day. In fact, even right now, engineers don't even know how those pyramids were built. So something was going on a long, long time ago that we have lost that knowledge. Why is that? What happened? They, they believe in, in the ancient Egyptian history that, uh, you know, guys came in, took over, and sort of got rid of all these enlightened people, and it became very egoic and very negative. And so we have this period in human history where a certain negativity crept into civilization. And as we move now into the time of Jesus— Here's Jesus preaching this gospel of love and forgiveness and um, all inclusivity. And he even talks about this oneness with the Father, that this relationship of intimacy with the human and the divine, such a beautiful gospel. And yet, not that much after his death and resurrection, we see even the early disciples arguing over whether someone should be circumcised in order to become a Christian or what kind of food they're eating. They, they were operating out of their human mindset, and they didn't really incorporate and understand the powerful message of Jesus Christ. 
Now we move forward into the 300s and we see some of the early church fathers where once again the negativity creeps in and we have Augustine talking about the concept of original sin, some sort of sin that we inherited from Adam and Eve, even though we had nothing to do with Adam and Eve. And so we're just born into sin, such a negative concept of a human being. Then we move forward into the 1500s with Martin Luther and John Calvin. Luther talked about that we're manure saved by Christ, or John Calvin with his doctrine of tulip, the T standing for total depravity. What what happened? What happened to this message of unconditional love and oneness? Is it possible that the tendency of the human mind to be negative, to focus on the negative, to focus on the bad things that have happened, which we all can sort of identify with, is it possible that this has actually influenced Christianity when they were forming the doctrines and the dogmas of the Christian church? Because we move into such a negative self-concept of a human being, of being a sinner and needing to be saved and rescued. And even if we're saved and rescued, we're still left with not really feeling too good about ourselves. It would be analogous to a child being adopted by a family with three you know, natural s- siblings and being reminded every day that they should be grateful that they were adopted and brought into that family. How would that child feel after a while if you're constantly reminded of that. I don't think it would be too life-giving for that child. Today we hear the gospel passage where Jesus is talking with such love and such tenderness as he says he's going to be leaving his disciples, but that he's going to the Father and he's going to be sending a paraclete, the Holy Spirit. He's going to be sending the very peace of God a peace that this world can't even understand or comprehend, a peace beyond our wildest imagination. And he's saying, I am giving this to you. This is inside of you, the peace of the living God, the presence of the living God, the strength of the living God. That's very, very different than total depravity and being born in sin. So I'm asking you today to ask yourself the question, what do you believe? You got those pair of glasses on through which you see the world, through which you see yourself. You need to do Jesus Christ a favor. He gave his life away on a cross. He paid the ultimate price so that you might believe in yourself and know you live with the very power of God inside of you because he needs you to go out there and live out his commitment and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're only going to be able to do that if you have that concept of yourself given to us by Jesus Christ. You're only as big as your concept of yourself as a loving human being. Jesus preached a gospel of love, which we've come to discover is the highest vibrational energy inside of a human being. When we love and we give and come out of ourselves, we live with a power that is beyond our wildest imagination. That's why when he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for holiness, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst to grow in their ability to love. Those human beings will be fully satisfied.